Thank you very much um, for um, letting me to have this talk. So it is about higher education. Higher education, um, um, it's a reflection of what we do in our teaching, in our uh, educational uh, aspects of students. And for me, a very important point is creativity. And the first step I will introduce to you what, what is creativity? Is it a social construct we have? Or do we have a biological background? As you heard, I'm a biologist. And I'm interested in evolutionary processes. So uh, the first thing um, is I want to clarify it for myself and for you. Um, uh, what, what could be uh, meant with, uh, with the term of creativity? And um, there are three main questions for me. Why do you feel to be uh, creative, to have the strive to be creative? What are the functional aspects to produce creativity and pass it to individuals in our society? So obviously, <clears throat> in our evolutionary history, we are producing some stuff, and this uh, stuff uh, we provide for the community and how does it work and uh, there is an introduction into the, the function of memes and uh, what has uh, the point or what is the point in higher education creativity uh, in relation to quality management systems we in, in Europe uh, underwent a very reorganization, very significant reorganization of the higher education system, of the third uh, education system. And um, this reorganization was uh, cooperated with uh, the introduction of quali quality management systems. And these quality management systems are broadly administrative. So there is not real and intellectual input in it. We, we, we try to judge uh, people how is the quality of their teaching, how satis satisfied are students, which is some, sometimes really a stupid thing because students go to one university, stay in that university, uh, and has to judge uh, the teachers. Are they good or are they bad? So the good teachers, are those who make very easy exams. The bad teachers are they who have the uh, um, more or less competitive exams. So these approaches, uh, uh, the evolution there, the evolution of creativity, the culture and creativity and creativity in universities are tried to put together and to make um, a holistic scheme of it. Uh, the origins of creativity uh, it is interesting, um, as a uh, zoologist, biologist, we see it is nearly, to be creative, is nearly um, universal in mankind, but in all other, not only mammals, it is universal, as far as we can judge it, in all uh, vertebrates. So it is a very interesting thing, and it is very, uh, it, is, it is here. Um, some authors uh, give some suggestions of uh, prerequisites for, cre for creativity. Uh, Caruthers proposes two elements, two cognitive elements, a uh, superposition generator, a uh, possible world box. Um, what this is, this is um, um, a very interesting uh, approach to the topic, but the superposition generator is nothing else that you have some hypothesis about the world. You're expecting some, something, and for these hypotheses, you need experience. If you have always the same experience, you will have always uh, the same hypothesis if some circumstances will repeat and so on. So Conrad Lawrence, um, he said, uh, you have to be a hypothetic realist in the world. Uh, that you can manage your world. Uh, it is an interesting thing, and it is an interesting thing in the con uh, uh, correlation with world box. Uh, the, um, uh, John uh, talked about uh, the complexity of the world. So we have to be able to, have to, to, to reflect in our brains 
different kind of worlds, different kind of complexity to judge these complexities and uh, to make from all this information new information, to go a step ahead, above all this information we are using. So it is possibly uh, a good approach um, uh, to, to, to find this whether these elements uh, have something to do with cognition is, is, is uh, hard to explain. Alternatively, Meaton suggests uh, these are the classical things which um, um, always will be referred to creativity. You have a theory of mind. I personally uh, don't like a, a theory of mind because uh, for me it is a stupid term. Every social living animal has a theory of mind. We all think we humans have the theory of mind. We, we are so empathetic. We know how, if you are feeling bad, I can approach that and I can feel, oh yeah, yeah, I'm very empathetic with you. Each social living animal, if it's a reptile, a bird, uh, whatever it is, uh, knows, lives in a group and, live and knows the position, the social position for itself and for the others in the group because they have to interacting. Social communication is interacting and to know uh, how the other animals are uh, situated in this social status in the group. So a theory of mind is for each animal it is here. Each animal with brains, uh, vertebrates. Language, language, this is a human thing uh, as well. Uh, with the evolution of language, it's uh, very complex. And language is really a very special thing and is really a very special thing for our evolutionary process and for our success. Without language, information flow would be nearly the, the same. And uh, the other thing is uh, the complex uh, material culture. It is that what we heard already that we have to deal uh, with uh, such an uh, such an uh, thing. This is uh, uh, a scheme of this uh, supposition generator. Um, possibly it works that way, but it, from from my feeling, it is too too mechanistic, and I, I like the approach of analogous cognition and uh, consciousness. Other ones uh, in, in uh, psychology, evolutionary psychology, uh, Randy Thornhill suggests aesthetic um, applications or aesthetic um, uh, aspects are uh, the uh, evolutionary basics or are the basics for being creative. So this has something to do with art. This has something to do with, uh, with uh, all these um, um, yeah, music and so on, and, and, and literature. And um, the interesting thing here is that Thornhill puts it in the context of feelings. Feeling posi positive about something. I see a picture, I see a painting. Is it that is a, a positive uh, um, uh, impression for me, or uh, negative emotions. And I think um, not uh, aesthetics is, is, is the big word in that uh, context. It is the big word in the emotional aspects. And this is that uh, what I strongly believe is all what we are, before we make decisions, we have an emotional uh, approach to our decisions. We feel not in a logic way, we feel not in a binar uh, binary uh, way, yes or no, we feel emotionally to produce this de decision how to act on this input. And this is a very interesting thing for me and that leads me to my own suggestion that cognition and consciousness is the key factor, the key factor how we are generating our decisions and how we are generating our creativity. Why is it important? Um, the cognition system in our brain is more or less, um, I uh, said it yesterday, is more or less located in the midbrain, mesolimbic system, midbrain area. So br our brain is uh, several sections, evolutionary sections. It is a mosaic evolution. You have the old brain, the reptile brain, brainstem, and then the midbrain where, where all these neurotransmitters are located, where all the hormones, are, uh, neurohormones are located. And these uh, structures uh, are connected, interrelated to the neocortex. And this is uh, the big thing. In our brain, 
And in this midbrain section, we are uh, producing our reward system. We have our reward system, and the reward system gives us the good or the bad feelings. So this is the very interesting thing, and this happens not only in mammals and animals like we are, who are able or who are expressing developed a neocortex. This obviously um, is also expressed in birds and uh, in reptiles. So this is a very, very interesting thing. For all these uh, brain areas, there are identical, identical homologous structures in birds and reptiles, and not only in mammals or in, in our brains. And therefore, I give you a short introduction about how these uh, uh, systems or how these systems are, uh, how these areas, we are the, from the areas we I'm talking, this is uh, the classical midbrain, uh, the mesolimbic uh, reward system, the mesolimbic brain. And over there is the huge uh, neocortex. And what does uh, the mesolimbic reward system do? It projects to the prefrontal cortex, the prefrontal cortex, where most of our decisions uh, uh, will be uh, generated. And, and this is the brainstem here. Um, and uh, the key factor of this system, uh, the, the, the key um, um, structure is the uh, dopamine system, and the dopamine system is something uh, which regulates our empathy, it regulates uh, our um, uh, wealth feeling or bad feelings and so on. Uh, this is a very, very uh, important stuff. And um, here you see a more from this uh, uh, mesolimbic reward system, a more schematic, uh, uh, schematic scheme. And um, here is the, the bone fishes, the amphibians, reptiles, birds, and mammals. And all these, we have the, the yellow one, the green and the blue, one, all these areas are homologous areas uh, in the brains. So these are very, very old structures. So even, even Peleos from, uh, from uh, developed 100 million years ago, they have the same structures, not all, but same structures in the brain to feel pleasure, to feel empathy, and even we have shown uh, these, these reptiles, they have cellular layers which are homolog to our neocortex. So we have our neocortex in humans, we have six layers, six layers which are interconnected, uh, um, uh, vertical and horizontal, and there you have the synaptic uh, connections. And in, in the human brains, synaptic connections are very, very dense. But these reptiles, have homologous neocortical cells from the fourth and fifth layer that we have. So we have the trend, it's a very, very old trend, to have the ability to produce limited or more uh, accelerated uh, consciousness and to produce the same uh, emotional uh, uh, qualities. Creativity, a Darwinian concept. So after, uh, why did I tell you that this with the brain sections and so on? There were uh, five or six years ago, uh, there were the first studies, genetic studies, who, um, the, it was able to connect a genetic um, uh, polymorphism from certain gene, from certain uh, uh, coding, gene codings, uh, proteins and so on, with creativity. And this creativity, it was uh, uh, a certain kind of, of polymorphism which is, was detected with creativity. And this uh, creativity um, polymorphism was related to drug addiction, was related um, uh, to, uh, to uh, sch uh, schizophrenia, to uh, brain diseases. And uh, therefore, uh, we have, uh, we, can, we can suggest, we can say that creativity seems to be uh, created or is, a, is not a byproduct, is a product 
of the natural selection process. And this would, is a, for me, it is a very interesting thing. And if it is uh, um, under selective pressure, uh, such as our reproductive behavior, such as our feeding behavior, then we have to nurture it. It's a very simple thing. And this would be a point. It is complex. It could be a point for the uh, higher education. Uh, this is uh, only a definition, creativity, uh, technological creativity, and uh, aesthetic creativity. Uh, but um, we can't judge it that all these uh, stuff is coming from or is um, evolve, uh, uh, um, uh, evolu evolved uh, from the natural selection processes. Here, I give you a short introduction in uh, steps in the brain evolution, which uh, obviously um, step uh, uh, higher in the in the phylogenetic uh, line, and uh, correlated with uh, better uh, creativity uh, abilities, uh, which are correlated with the brain evolution. Uh, the interesting thing is we are starting more or less if we take a. Uh, it is not a real ancestor because it was a side branch, but Australopithecus, uh, the generalized mind, a uh, very, very simple mind uh, uh, in that way. Uh, a generalized mind, we can say all our primate um, um, related species do have a more or less uh, generalized mind. Uh, it is the same for the chimpanzees or for the macaques. Chimpanzees and the macaques are not very different uh, in their cognition abilities. Uh, the modular uh, mind, uh, this was the next step in the evolutionary process. We have it in Homo erectus, in the Hayek, Homo sapiens, uh, and then in uh, the Neanderthaler, and uh, then the cognitively fluid uh, mind, which is an interesting uh, hypothesis or idea which happened in the modern humans. Um, this is uh, learning problems. The generalized brain is uh, also f uh, happened in or is found in the dog brain. So uh, we have just dog brains a little bit smaller than, than the monkey brains, uh, but um, uh, we have more or less the same, same uh, 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 capacity in these brains. All these animals are real social, all these animals uh, have the ability to learn, have the ability to create something, have the ability uh, to use tools and so on. You always read in the media, of oh, the chimpanzees, they are so smart. Uh, they can use uh, a, a very short um, uh, wood stick to, to fish termites and so on. So this is not really a, a, a great, excite cognitive uh, performance. Dogs can do that, birds can do that. Uh, a lot of animals can do such a, uh, uh, such a have such a, um, a creative uh, brain. Uh, uh. Then the model of face. There are. This is an interesting idea that in our brain we have certain types of, of modules, uh, which are representing all uh, are, are correlated uh, with uh, some functional aspects to survive. Uh, you, we have the modules for being uh, social, for being sexual active, for feeding, and so on. And uh, to have a better surviving, over the uh, millennia, these models domain became intelligent. This is true. It is because uh, uh, the systems, phylogenetically, is becoming more complex, and we have, uh, we have uh, uh, synaptic uh, numbers uh, three uh, to, to, to uh, five million uh, synaptic um, um, related inter interferences we have in our brains. So there are a lot, a lot of abilities uh, to deal with certain problems in our world. And uh, again, these, uh, it is believed that four models were special for the uh, humans. This is the social one. I don't believe that, that the social one, each, as I uh, uh, said it before, each species which lives in, and it is a lot of species living in the social context, have this ability of social models, social intelligence, technical intelligence. 
it is in uh, stepwise, but it is uh, not only uh, it is it is accelerated expressed in humans, but in all in, in other uh, species as well. Natural history and, and impact of natural history. I think this is a, a interesting thing that is human special. Uh, do not have seen or read any evidence that animals have a clue about the, the natural history, about nature per se. They do not have it. Uh, they do not act uh, that they, they are aware what is that nature, what nurtures them. They just use it like consumers. And linguistic. Linguistic, the very special thing uh, in in the, uh, in the monkey, uh, in the human brain, then the cognitive fluid. So these uh, models became permeable so that everything becomes mixed together. And we have, this is a degree on freedom, a uh, degree on freedom to make decisions. And um, it is uh, um, suggested that this degree of freedom is negatively related to uh, the uh, genetic input genetic input that, uh, that uh, certain, uh, certain kinds of behavior are determining only in, uh, of a genetical basis. So our behavior, uh, there is a variance between 25, 30, uh, 20% to 60% our behavior is genetically determined, um, whereas in, in, in many birds, it is, uh, behavior is uh, up to 100% genetically uh, uh, determined. What, what is the conclusion of all that? It merged the technical ideas uh, where we were uh, interrelated with social ideas. And possibly uh, the first thing we have here as an example, uh, documented example in the, uh, in the evolutionary history of mankind are the cave paintings. Uh, one of the earliest is in, in France, in Chauvet. Uh, approximately uh, 300, uh, 30,000 years ago. And what they did is uh, they used art as social, in a social communication in relation to their uh, hunting behavior. To their, uh, their hunting behavior, they have to um, create the weapons and they made, they connected it to a social tool, to a cultural tool. And this is a very interesting step uh, which uh, firstly uh, came about uh, 30,000 uh, years ago. Here I give you just um, a, a short impression of what is all genetically. This is about intelligence. So I don't mean that creativity has something to do with intelligence. But it is a nice uh, 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 slide from my point of view. Uh, because it says you about the the hairy uh, uh, about the, the heredity of brain size of different brain structures. So uh, your brain size, your individual brain size, is up to uh, eighty five percent heredity. This is this is you have to deal with that, and um, and uh, brain size means different uh, numbers. Different brain size means different numbers of synaptic uh, 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 connections. Then um, the most uh, um, hereditary uh, sizes and functional aspects we have in the neocortex of the brain, so uh, the prefrontal brain um, and um, uh, the, the, uh, the frontal lobe, uh, which are the most with 30% and 25% uh, is uh, inherited. So this is uh, what you have and what, uh, what your fate is. This is the basics where creativity can be or plays a role in a biological point. And if we go to that uh, cultural aspect uh, about uh, creativity, then uh, we have a um, uh, very interesting thing, and I like the concept of memes because the memes, um, it was Richard Dawkins who introduced the memes, more or less. Um, the, the question is, is creativity only a personal affair? Possibly it is a personal affair to develop it, but I don't believe it, that even. It is a collective affair. Why is it a collective affair? I need information from outside 
to produce another information and to provide this information for the community. And then have the ability to produce something new, the new stuff, the new sparkling ideas and so on. And uh, to understand it, how it works, uh, the memes, uh, for me, a very good uh, example. The memes, um, um, they are functioning very, very uh, similar to genes. So these memes, the information contents of memes, which are successful, they will stay in the society, they will attract other memes, and so they grow and grow and grow, and then I have uh, um, more uh, information content and possibly some uh, creative sparks. And all these memes who are not able to survive, they will be clarified from the system. And um, it is more, Dawkins defines it as a unit of cultural transmission or a unit of imitation. Imitation is very good because this is our, our main, uh, main uh, um, approach to generate new things. We imitate something, we learn something, we were educated with something. This is the methodological approach in universities. I can't be creative if I know uh, about the stuff uh, what I will be in which I will be uh, creative the rules of that stuff this is very important if you're playing music you can improvise but you don't have a chance if you don't uh, know anything about the scale or you uh, anything about you know about the key change you have to know this basics then to make more from this uh, stuff means uh, how they work so they are connected they can be connected uh, in webs of associations and so on and so on so this is all these um, uh, the uh, the allo meme this is a nice for me a very nice uh, uh, um, uh, term because the allo meme is, is the same term like the alleles so you can have a polymorphism you can change some part of it and to generate new things if we have uh, a, a mutation on a allele, then we have a different genotype. For example, if you, if someone has problem with uh, alcohol disease or, uh, or something else, uh, drug addiction and so on. So there is, in the dopaminergic system, alleles will be changed. So you can't say, okay, this guy uh, um, uh, is not allowed to drink anymore and so on. But this is his genetic nature. You can socially not uh, really uh, bring him uh, away from these habitus. And similar, allo means function like this uh, as, a, as a variation of the phenotype, of uh, cultural phenotype, like the alleles in the genetic uh, thing. Chunking and categorizing of means, and this is interesting for the creative uh, stuff, you're uh, absorbing all these informations and then you're putting some new informations together and with that kind of uh, putting information, categorize information, putting it uh, into a, a more or less complex uh, uh, stuff, you are able to uh, create, uh, um, according to your education, your, um, uh, new, new ideas, new sparks, new um, uh, creative things. And this chunking, we are always uh, putting things together, try to put things from different domains together and, and uh, make something new. Uh, creative sparks, um, so um, you see uh, creativity is considered from us, from our definitions, for us. Uh, we don't believe, uh, we like the animals, uh, we like animals if they behave in the same way we behave, we like the animals if they eat the same like we eat. We have the same problems uh, from the health system in animals because they eat the same junk food like we are eating and they are overweight and so on. So, and the more human-like, the more clever or smart are for, uh, animals for us. But I don't uh, believe that uh, creativity is um, a human, uh, human stuff, a human thing. I believe it is an animal. And it is animal because animals as humans are adapted to specific en environmental conditions. And these environmental conditions uh, are, this is the feedback. This is the feedback which uh, we have um, in our genes. And this is uh, uh, the guideline how we are 
been able to be creative. And uh, some uh, uh, propose that generative sparks can be uh, stimulated by brainstorming, genetics, lateral thinking, mind mapping, and so on. But all these things are very difficult uh, to, to create if sparks, uh, to, 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 to formalize it and to control it. So this is uh, the way how I think higher education is uh, approaching to that, uh, to that uh, 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 theme of, uh, of uh, creativity. And um, my belief is it is a process based on randomized or, uh, or, or uh, structured framework. So I, I believe it is a process of structured framework. Uh, to be creative is not uh, related with a higher degree of freedom. High degree of freedom is only based if I have a solid, a solid background to uh, where I can uh, uh, try uh, to, to uh, fix something new. And it is what, uh, what we have to look at in, 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 our, in our educational systems that we um, are sensitive for the rules of the game. We have to teach the methodological uh, approach. This is very, very important. And then uh, give uh, the students the possibility to do something to achieve for something unexpected. And I think this is trainable, possibly. The big rules of the generate big ideas are like the advertising research, because advertising research uh, they put something uh, very, very uh, strange or, or creative uh, things uh, together. They have their, their templates and they have parallel templates and they overlap these templates. And this was an advertisement for uh, uh, vaccination. And it is vaccination, uh, this is the animal who is responsible for transmitting the disease and the vaccination is, uh, uh, and how is it doing? Uh, with a syringe. So this is, this is a short, uh, uh, really nice made, and this is something what I would say this is a cross-functional thinking of, of the field. And to tell them, to tell students something to cross-functional, put together to a new one, is uh, to me, uh, one can explain it and one can, tr can try to do it. And what is it about um, uh, universities? We, um, I already, uh, already said that it is a step-by-step -step increase the quality of teaching methodological issues. Um, it is, most students, this is my uh, experience, most students like to read in uh, scientific publications uh, the introduction. They don't like the methodological section. This is always boring. And they, the conclusions after the discussion is sometimes uh, very nice. But uh, the methods, they don't want to read the methods. It is always, it is always hard, and, and, and they, we, should, we should overcome that. Templates, frameworks, and so on. Uh, this is the, the one uh, where I come back. Quality management in, un, uh, uh, in universities is right now, as far as I can judge it really from the University of Vienna, Counterproductive to creativity because it is just administrative uh, stuff, and they don't have put it on to the intellectual stuff, put it on to creative stuff. So uh, we should uh, uh, have a new definition of the uh, quality management in universities, which is not only nurtures uh, the administration; it should nurture the education. This is something about the uh, teaching teachers and so on. And I will finish it. This is a nice thing. Um, uh, creativity, you see, uh, a different environments have different influence of, uh, of creativity. You see, uh, creativity obviously has a positive input in the university system and always a negative input in, in the business system. So the business system seems to be very focused on making money and uh, how to make it, it doesn't matter. It is the sum, is the, the winning, is the interesting thing. That is my quintessence. The evolutionary aspect um, justified it to have, to teach it, to bring it more in our society, to include it 
it in, in, our, in our university system. system. It is uh, a cultural must, of course, and it should be an uh, ultimate uh, must for the quality management in our society. Thank you, our education society. This is it. Thanks.